So you just had a dodgy meal at a questionable restaurant. This was about a few hours ago. You get home and start feeling the stomach upset. You ignore it because, oh well, you have been feeling unwell most of the day. Two hours later, a few moments later, you begin to vomit and have excessive diarrhea. Let's talk about cholera. Cholera is an acute infection of the gastrointestinal system, mainly affecting the small intestines. It is caused by an organism called Vibrio cholerae. Once infected with this organism, it produces toxins that cause clinical features that we see in the condition. Transmission occurs through ingestion of water or other foods contaminated by excrement of people with symptoms or those that do not have symptoms but have the infection. People living in a house with patients that have cholera are at high risk of infection, which probably occurs through shared sources of contaminated food and water. Person-to-person -person transmission is less likely because a large inoculum, which you can think about as the number of organisms needed to introduce infection, is needed. Cholera affects all age groups. However, children have the highest incidence, and susceptibility to cholera varies, and it has been seen to be found to be much more common in individuals with blood type O. Cholera can be subclinical and only present with mild and uncomplicated episodes of diarrhea, or it can be fulminant and potentially lethal. Clinical features include abrupt, painless, watery diarrhea and vomiting, significant nausea is typically absent, and stool loss in adults may exceed one liter per hour but is usually much less than this. The stool often consists of a white liquid without fecal material that is often referred to as rice water stool. Because of the resultant severe water and electrolyte loss, there may be intense thirst, a reduced urine output, muscle cramps, weakness, and marked loss of skin turgor with sunken eyes and wrinkling of the skin of the fingers. If cholera is untreated, it may result in circulatory collapse with cyanosis and stupor. Prolonged hypovolemia can cause damage to the kidneys, resulting in renal tubular necrosis. Most patients are free of vibrio cholerae within two weeks after cessation of diarrhea. However, some individuals may carry the organism in their biliary tract and act as chronic carriers. Diagnosis of cholera is mainly through microscopic examination and culture of the stool samples. However, some rapid dipstick tests are available and offer a quick result. However, positive samples must be confirmed by culture. Treatment of cholera includes fluid replacement or rehydration, either through oral intake or intravenously, depending on the severity of dehydration, as well as antibiotics in some cases, depending on the susceptibility of the organism causing the infection. Some antibiotics used include doxycycline, azithromycin, trimethoprimsulfamethoxazole, or ciprofloxacin. For control of cholera, human excrement must be correctly disposed of and water supplies purified. In areas endemic, drinking water should be boiled or chlorinated and vegetables along with shellfish cooked thoroughly. Ensure you wash your hands thoroughly with soap before preparing meals and before eating. Always leave foods covered and avoid eating uncovered cold food. In some cases, antibiotic prophylaxis and the cholera vaccine may be indicated. With strict public health care measures, cholera can be prevented. Visit your nearest public health facility if you suspect to have cholera.